What's up, everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Ask PJ. And I have a special guest here, Christian Giorgio. And the reason that he is here is because I wanted to bring in an expert, even though a lot of you guys think I'm an expert, on social media because, well, let's face it, Legion members, I love you guys, but a lot of you are doing it wrong. So, Chris, how are we going to help everybody out? So, most of the things that I see are like 95% of people, not just in the Legion, but in general on social media, are not really doing the wrong things, but they could be like improving their content, improving their engagement so much more by just doing a couple extra things and taking like a good look at their posts before they post them. Um, one of the things I want, I'm, I'm going to talk about a couple things. Um, first, I'm going to give you general social media advice. Um, and what this is, it's going to apply to everything you do on your personal page, whether you play guitar, whether you work out, whether you're an IFBP pro or you're someone who's out of shape and wants to get in shape. Um, this is gonna, just going to be general advice that you should take a look at every time you post. And then I'm going to go and break down into examples with the Legion, um, what you can be doing in the Legion to help boost who's looking at your posts and just make everything you do more effective. Um, the first thing that I would say is you want to start thinking like a marketer. Um, start really being critical of your posts. Um, the first thing I'm going to say here is that um, you need to have like a storyteller mindset mm -hmm. whenever you put, put a post out there. Like, don't get me wrong, you know, in, in fitness, there is a big thing where people just post their progress pictures. They're just putting a picture out there saying, you know, it's starting to come together before the competition. I mean, you know what? That's great. You know, and 20% of your posts can be like that. But you can offer so much value to people if you explain your process. What are you doing to get there? Like, especially when you get to a point where you're looked up to by a lot of people in the industry, like, they're, they're not just following you to see pictures of your apps. They're following you because they look up to you. You can be a huge source of motivation, and you can also be a great guide to how to get and break into the fitness world. Um, and same thing with everything you do. Like, if you are posting a video of you playing guitar, explain the process. What did you do? Like, make, like, you want to seem like a real person. You have to start being more authentic with what you do. Like, listen, it's okay if you fail because everybody fucking fails. Like, learn how you can get past that. Learn, um, show that because it makes you seem so much authentic when you, when you, like, show your failures. And not just that. Like, people love watching people fail. Yeah. Because you know, that's how you learn. Exactly. And not just that. Like, it makes them say, you know what? If Joe Schmo, like, popular fitness guy, you know... When he first, he almost ate ass when he like was doing his bench press. Like, you know what? I guess I'm not too bad after all. You know, like it's something that, you know, makes you feel so much more confident. That makes your viewers feel so much confident. They like going to your stuff because they feel like you're an actual person. Yeah. So many people have this idea that social media is supposed to be this thing where you have to put on your social media personality. Mm -hmm. And they, they, they're afraid that, you know, if they show weakness or they show, like, failures or they show all this stuff, that people are not going to see them the same way. It's the opposite. Like, they want to see that you're a human being. Um, and that goes to the other thing. Like, look at your posts and say, is this interesting to anybody else except for myself? Like, are you being self-serving? Like, are you doing this for your ego? Are you doing this because, you know, you saw, you know, someone else that you respect doing it? Like, take a look at it and say, like, is this helpful for anybody? Is this entertaining for anybody? Does this, like, put me in a light where I feel like I look authentic to other people? Because if you don't have a, if one of those things aren't correct, it's something that's not going to be as successful on social media. I mean, you can, and that goes back to the rule 80-20. Like, 20% 20 of your stuff can be self-serving 100%. Mm -hmm. But you want to try to make it so you look at every post and say, listen, is this something that someone else except for me is going to be interested in? Am I adding some sort of value here? Am I, like, being entertaining in any way? Like, you have to look at everything because, you know, these po pictures are great, but, you know, when you see someone actually talking about their process and you say to yourself, well, you know, that makes a lot of sense. I need to do that. That's how you get posts saved, you know, comments. That's how you get people to follow you. You know, they might like your post if you post a picture of your body progress and don't really leave any, like, context. But that's not how you're going to get followers. That's not how you're going to get loyal people that are going back to your page constantly. Mm -hmm. Like, what has been, like, your experience, like, um, 
how do you normally um, organize your posts when you do so social media? I run the Blackstone page, my personal page, a lot different, even though Blackstone Labs is, in many ways, PG Braun Labs. So the biggest difference between my page and the Blackstone page, and I think it's very important for people to understand this because people will reach out to me and they'll say, oh, can you post me on the Blackstone page or can you post me on your page? And there's a major difference and I'll explain why. So my personal page is all of the things that I really like and enjoy. And I wanna share those things with other people because they mean something to me. So there's a few things that I really like and enjoy, bodybuilding, cars, cats, hot girls. There was a point where I was very interested in guns, but because of my federal case, I'm not allowed to own any guns anymore, so that's not on there anymore. So when I'm putting my content out, on my actual wall, it's stuff that I'm very proud of because it might mean something special to me, or it's something that I really, really love. So if I have a professional photographer take a picture of my Ferrari and, uh, one of our beautiful fitness models, to me, I'm like, okay, you've got my car that I'm very proud of that I love. You have a girl that works for me that is beautiful and everybody that I know, like that's everybody that likes cars usually likes girls also, right? Unless they also like boys, which we can do some of those. I can, <laughs> I can throw myself in on the, on the car pictures. Uh, but I'm putting it out there, not because I want people to be like, okay, this guy's showing it off because I find that there's a lot of people that have similar interests that will look at that and then want to see what else I'm putting out. So then they might see the next post happens to be like one of my kittens and it could be something really cute. And they might say, okay, that's kind of weird. This guy went from cars to kittens to, oh, I have a cat too. And now you found a similarity with somebody. Exactly. So my wall is a, it's basically a, I, I tell people your wall should be kind of like, a postcard of, of who you are on the outside, right? 100%. Now, my story is what I got going on in my life that day. And I feel like a lot of people don't understand the difference between a story and a wall post. And so a lot of people, when they do their stories, they use that as an example of like, I'm going to put something in here that I don't know if I want out, but it'll be gone in 24 hours anyway. Or, you know, maybe I'm going to say something like, bad about a guy that I was dating or a girl that I was dating and it'll be gone in 24 hours. The way, the, way I, the way I use my story and the way that I try to teach people to use it is it's almost like you're giving a daily vlog, but it's a very raw and grassroots version of the vlog. So there is not a lot of wrong that you can do in your story. The, the worst thing you can do in your story is just not use it. Yeah. And so for me, a lot of times I wake up and it's earlier in the morning and my cats are doing something cute and I'll throw them in my story because it may be dark, they may be doing something silly. It's not something that I need to have as like a postcard of my wall, but there's people that follow me that know that I like cats that might be like, oh, look at this cats. They know the names at this point. They, they like enjoying you know what I have going on in my life. Then perhaps it might be breakfast time and they, they like seeing what I eat. This is also how I have gotten in with meal sponsors and things like that because people see what I'm eating and then next thing you know, like made some macro friends and they're like, we'd like to send you food. And we became friends and lo and behold, made some macro happened to be working out and taking Blackstone Labs. We had that partnership there. And you'd be so surprised if you just put your stories out there more, what other similar people you could wind up making friends with and doing business with, but you don't know unless you put that stuff out. Yeah. So when I when I... I'll be, you know, raw. When I first look at somebody's page, I go through their wall first. And I basically decide what I think of this individual based on what their wall is. And I promise you, there's a lot of people that do that. Yeah. And if they're interesting to me, I follow them and then I start looking at their stories. But They've got to have a wall that interests me first before I even think about looking at their stories. Yeah. Now, if they're somebody that really interests me a lot on their wall, I might start looking at their stories more often and I might find them so interesting that every day I want to look at their stories and see what they got going on. And this happens all the time. So when people look at your wall and you've got a strong wall and then you have nothing going on in your stories, well, you're not going to capture them anymore after that. And there's so many different levels because we need to get into where each person's at and, and break that down before we really get into like what they have to have on their, on their, on their wall versus their stories. Yeah. I mean, 
when it comes down to under other interests, that's super important. One, because like, especially if you're trying to develop a personal brand, you are not just fitness. You're not just whatever your profile is mainly targeted against. And not just that, it gives you so much opportunities to go after people that might have like cross interests that make it really beneficial for you. I mean, and with stories, that's where you have even playing field. Mm -hmm. um, because it's not like a feed where the algorithm like decides who comes to you first. It's based on time. There are some, you know, um, algorithms based on who you see first. But that's your opportunity. Like, it doesn't matter if you made 10 story posts that day. You'll still get people who watch at, l like, the same rate. Like, that is your even playing ground where you don't have to worry about the Instagram algorithm as much. Mm -hmm. So, and, and stories are meant to be something that are throwaway. They're temporary. I mean, st they should still be entertaining. They should still have value to them. But you're, like, for example... If you're posting, you know, your, your progress for the day, um, that you can do that on a story, but you should wrap up with progress for the week. What's, what's going on with you for that week? Their story should be something that you're not afraid of just being like anything that is super valuable should not go on stories. Mm -hmm. You should keep it on your page. Absolutely. But if you have something that you want to share, like for example, a cat, you know, you have something that your cat did that were, that was funny. That's great for a story. Mm -hmm. You know, something, you know, maybe you, um, had an interesting experience at the gym. Um, if it was something that you think is viral worthy, put it on your feed. But if, you know, you just saw someone doing something weird, maybe that goes on the story. You know, use your stories and in, in your feeds um, smart. You have to, you know, kind of figure out what's best to use on each individual one. Your stories are temporary, maybe not something as interesting or as at value adding, and your feeds are for something that you really want to use as your portfolio of like, who you are on social media, you know? But I mean, when it comes down to that, like you should start every story and every feed. Well, more importantly for feed, you should start off every feed with an open-ended statement or question. You should try to get people like hooked in in that mm -hmm. first five seconds because that's usually all you have. Um, 70 to 80% of people just skip through videos after the first three seconds. Mm -hmm. um, and when it comes down to stories, your first story is really important. The first story that they see, if they like their first story, they'll watch them all. Yep. Um, so you have to be very mindful of making sure that if you're, if you're posting, make sure that first couple seconds is super, super powerful. Keep them engaged. And then on feeds, this is especially important. If you're posting to your wall on um, Instagram, it's important that the last thing you say generates engagement. So you should end with like an open-ended question at the end. Ask people, ask the people that are following you for their opinion on something or ask them a question about something. Leave it down in the comments. You see this all the time with influencers mm -hmm. because they've learned that if they end with an open-ended question like that, it gets more people to engage. If more people engage, you show up more to your followers. Like most people default to 10% of their followers are seeing their posts. Mm -hmm. So every bit of engagement you get improves your chances of showing up on top of feed. And this is why, guys, when you look at all the big influencers, when they have these like silly questions and then they end it with, if you like what I did, like or comment below, they're asking you to participate in what they just put out. That's why they do that. There, there's, it's not a coincidence that they all end with those statements like that. They have figured out there's, there's books and there's, of course, teachers that will tell you this is how you get people to engage. Any time where I have put out anything that was just a statement, I'm always surprised that how many people don't talk about it versus if I ask a question about it. Absolutely. I could put out a picture of, I'll give you an example. I could put out a picture of um, Frida Paulson Stern uh, doing like a, a back shot and it could just be like an awesome booty pic and I could write like hump day. Um, I could put the same picture out and say, um, who thinks that Frida should do this? And people start adding their two, cent two cents in after that. And that is just how you get those people to start engaging with you. Then from there, it's it's a lot of people drop the ball by not engaging back and that's yeah. another huge step because i think that a lot of the people that are joining the legion they're brand new they're not necessarily brand new to social media but maybe they're brand new to blackstone labs but what we're going to explain is stuff that helps everybody on social media 100 percent. but we also want to specifically help the legion itself 
because the amount of people that join the Legion and then say, now what I do is pretty high. Yeah. And I mean, and the reason for it is because 90%, it's not just the Legion. 95% of people don't know how to use social media. They're used to taking pictures, like when, especially when like Instagram was brand new, like taking pictures of their food. Mm-hmm. Like, but what you don't understand is like, take a look at, um, have you seen Slim Jim's yeah. Instagram page? Mm-hmm. Like something that is, has, I mean, it has something to do with meat and their, their product, but they go to completely opposite way of yeah. every other brand. And you know, you don't have to follow the rules to be successful, mm-hmm. but at that same time, you have to follow the rules of, is it interesting? Is it engaging? Is it entertaining? Like if you do any one of those things, you will be having, you'll, your social media profile will be much more successful. And you really have to look at everything you do. Post one to three times a day. Yeah. Everybody needs to do this. I mean, because if you post less than one times a day, Instagram is going to put your posts farther down. If you post more than three times a day, what happens is you will get around the same engagement if you post um, three times a day as you post five times a day. Mm-hmm. But what happens is it gets split between all of your posts. You Instagram will decide based on the engagement of the first thousand to two thousand views, so, um, sometimes less a hundred, um, which post is performing the best, and the other one just gets pushed down to mm-hmm. the side. So like what you can't really you know, it's not as important if you're just trying to get things out there. But if you really want to see what's performing well on your page you should only stick to as much as three posts a day because you'll have a better idea of what are, which one of your posts is actually doing well. And you can pay attention to the timing as well because a lot of you guys aren't paying attention to timing. And when you know times that you're going to get the most engagement, that's really when you should be putting your pictures out. Because sometimes even my, my, my top influencers will be like, well, this, this picture didn't do good and it's the same as this one. And this one did do good. And then I will say, well, look at your, your, your timing of your post and look at your engagement. You posted this one at six o'clock in the morning. Everybody was sleeping. You posted this one at noon. Everybody was on their lunch break and they were probably swiping through their Instagram. Like you have to pay attention to these times. I myself know for the Blackstone page that, and I, of course, I base things on an Eastern time zone because we're, we're in the Eastern time zone. The Blackstone page, the number one best time for engagement for us is between about... 11 a.m. and 1, so noon. That's where I stick. Yeah. So outside of that, we typically do our waking up, you know, here's their start of the day post, like right before 9. We've got that strong uh, noon post. Now you guys that know this will be like, oh, that's why they always drop the sales at noon. That's why we always drop the clothes at noon. Uh, and then the, the other two times that are good for us are usually everybody's getting out of work, that 5, 6 p.m., and then your prime time. You know, eight, nine, ten o'clock. Yeah, that's for Blackstone Labs. That's when our specific customers are on the most, and so yeah. we like to make sure we're hitting those spots. Um, and if you know the spot for you, and you can look yourself, uh, not only can you look at your insights, but you can just pay attention. Especially if you're only posting. Listen, if you're only posting one time a day, you can try posting at all completely different times, but you're not going to have the same track record. Versus if you say to yourself, okay, I'm going to make a deal that I'm going to post three times a day, no matter what, and I'm going to post at these three specific times. It's very, very easy to see where your engagement is the strongest. 100%. You know, and I'm going to say that in most industries, it's the same. Mm -hmm. Um, 11 to one and um, somewhere around five to nine Mm o'clock. And the reason for that is because like, and I'm talking about Eastern time time zone here, because Pacific, their five o'clock is eight o'clock. Yep. So with them, you know, that's your area of like where the rush is happening. Mm -hmm. Um, Most people get on during um, during um, their lunch break, but it's not as common. Um, A lot of people get on before work. Um, So, you know, but the thing is, that's a lot harder because you're segmenting your groups because Eastern and Pacific, like they're not Pacific's not even up yet. So it doesn't even make sense to put a big thing up at that point in time. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, you have to really like examine who's on your page as if you're if all of your friends don't work then maybe you know um two o'clock in the morning might be great for you yeah you know but it's most likely your best time is 11 to 11 to 1 yeah and if you start getting really really precise which we don't expect the legion members to worry about this yet but if you start getting really really precise if you're starting to put out specials that you want to hit certain areas for instance we have a pretty big australian market so 
we look at the times because most of Australia, Sydney, for instance, is a 12 hour difference than us. So we know that if we want something, you know, for Sydney to see or for Melbourne to see, we've got to look at, okay, well, when is it eight o'clock there? You know, when is it nine o'clock there? When is it six o'clock there? Fortunately, it's 12 hours. So it makes it easier for the math purposes. Yeah. Um, But that's when you want to specifically hit a group. If you're trying to just go out there and, and capture as many people as once, what, Chris and I are, are giving you guys our, our guidelines that will work just like Chris said for, for any industry that you're in. Even like, and you have to start thinking about it not as just like Legion Post or not, you're developing your personal brand. Mm-hmm. Take a look at like people like Elon Musk or Gary Vee or any of those other like big names in social media. They have a name that was developed by continuously building on their personal brand. Like they are more... Elon is more than spaceships and cars, Yes, you know, and you have to look at yourself and see what, who am I? How can I be myself on um, social media? What's interesting that I can talk about, that I can tell a story about and use that to kind of put your life out there. I mean, so many people are afraid of like showing the stuff about their life that they're not, that's not so great. Or um, they're, they're trying to put on their social media personality. Stop it. People want to see the real you and you're you're just doing yourself a disservice by trying to always seem like the perfect person Mm -hmm. i mean there there are people that literally got famous for random things like the guy that with the skateboard that like um with the cranberry juice there's the guys that you know there's the fail videos like fail army made like a killing off of people that just constantly like got hurt doing things Mm -hmm. Like, and no one ever goes in the street and says, ha you're the guy who failed. No one, you know, no one cares. Like, and it's so liberating in a sense that like, you don't really have to care about how you appear on the internet. As long as you're not doing something overly stupid. Yeah. I mean, then, you know, you, you, your employer might come to you and talk about that. But. Well, that's another thing. When you are in the Blackstone Labs Legion, so people will say to me all the time, I'm not allowed to do this because of my job. But here's the thing, if that's the case, that's one of our main rules. That's, we, we don't have many rules at all. But one of the main ones is you've got to have a public place page where it's okay to put stuff out. So if you have a page that's private and nobody can see it anyway, that doesn't do anything for any brand as far as marketing goes. If you have to have a page that stays specifically private, then you're really looking into more like, okay, this is just for my family or people that I'm close to. Once you have a public page, now you're essentially – you're marketing something, whether it's just yourself or whether it's all the stuff that you love or if it's a brand. And for us, we have all these different levels of Legion members. And I think it's very important to make sure that we let them know the simple things that, well, going forward in Legion, we're going to let you guys know things that, that aren't allowed. But the reason that they're not allowed is because they're not doing you or anybody else a, a service anymore anyway. And part of the whole, this whole this whole podcast was started because when Christian Duke took over the Legion, he had pointed out to me, you know, so many people are just reposting like Black Slabs graphics. And if you were a brand new Legion member and nobody knows who you are yet, and all you're doing is just putting a graphic out there, for starters, still nobody knows who you are. And Instagram recognizes that it's a graphic that's already been out a bunch of times anyway, and nobody's even seeing it. And not even just that, like, we're so used to seeing ads. We, mm-hmm. we constantly, um, everybody is used to seeing ads. They know what they look like and they filter them out. I mean, any image with text in it is not going to perform as well on Instagram as an image of an actual person. And that's or super important. A lot of people don't know that. Yeah. Like if you have text, it's not going to perform as well. Mm-hmm. And not just on that, like you, you know how to recognize ads when you see them. And, you know, you're, I'm sure that you immediately just scroll past ads instinctively. It's not even something you think about anymore. The more you can give, like, organic, great content, the more successful you're going to be on social media. Like, even, like, the events industry, which was originally exempt from, like, um, Instagram's, like, rules and Facebook's rules on text. Now, they, got, they caught on, and they're doing everything as a video now because... They recognize that, okay, even though they said we're exempt, we're still seeing so much less engagement. And it's because people don't engage with it. Mm -hmm. And what happens is it ends up hurting you in the end because now that all these posts that you make with text 
are happening so often, your engagement goes down and everything else that you post, even in things that are outside of the Legion, are getting just destroyed. Yeah, you just cannibalized your whole, your whole page. Exactly. So if somebody's brand new to the Legion and they have to make five posts, right, which to me is very simple. We give you guys very, very easy requirements. And I'm going to get really real with you guys for a second because this is the way I break it down to people when they're like, oh, well, does that seem like a lot? I'm not really sure. And I said, if somebody told you that you could make five posts for Nike every month and then at the end of the month you would get a free pair of Nikes, I would do it. I, would do I, I don't know anybody that's that's that rich that they wouldn't want to do that. That seems pretty simple to me. It takes five minutes every day. And no, so even. five minutes yeah. every week. Yeah. And I could in my head, I could already think of like, oh, I could take a picture of myself walking, running. Here I am stepping on something. Here I am playing sports. Here I am tying my shoes. Like the amount of ideas, plus the angles and everything else. There you go. There's all your poster already for Nike. Now I got a free pair of Nikes. That's pretty amazing. So for Blackstone Labs, when you join the Legion. I think a lot of people, for starters, because they're starting their journey so new to the fitness game, that sometimes they're perhaps embarrassed yeah. or shy or don't know, maybe they think I'm overweight or I don't have muscles. What do you suggest, like, let's give the rules that they can really learn to go by? So first thing I'm gonna say is, if you are out of shape, you are in a better position than some people who are just kind of in the mid range because like I there, you are more helpful to the Legion and you are going to have much better content than people that are halfway in. Like all you have to do, like, listen, you get a hundred dollars a month in free supplements. You get a workout plan. You get a meal plan. You follow it. You put your p progress up every, every, every couple of days, tell people where you're at. People love watching stories of this mm -hmm. and you just have to be real with yourself and real with the people that you're speaking to your followers and tell them like, hey, you know, it was tough this time. You know, like I, like example, like um, your first post should be like, I've come to a realization that I need to lose some weight and I wanna, I wanna change, you know, how I look. So I'm gonna cut 30 pounds, I'm gonna gain some muscle. Blackstone Lab sponsored me with $100 in free supplements, diet plan, workout plan, so I have no excuse to not crush it at the gym. If you're looking to cut some weight, head over to Blackstone Labs, call my rep, John Sample, and just say you heard about Blackstone Labs for me and say you want to join the Legion or get the Blackstone workout plan and get $100 in free supplements too. Like literally like all you have to do is just wor work out, do the work, take the supplements, talk about your experience. You know, like things have been going pretty good. I ate ass on a treadmill. You know, don't be afraid to talk about your failures. That's great content. You know, don't be afraid of like talking about how you failed. Like, oh, I meant to do 50. I was trying to do 50 push-ups, but I only got the 25. Mm -hmm. You know, I'll try better next time. You know, it seems so much more real. People respect that and people relate to that more than they're going to relate to, you know, you lying about doing 500 push-ups. You know, don't always try to be like this social media personality that is perfect. No one respects that. Not, not that no one respects it. No one sees you as a real person and no one relates to you. Mm -hmm. The more they see you as an actual person, like someone that can actually be their friend, the more they're going to just tune into your stuff, even if they don't know you. Like you have to kind of figure out how like be a real personality on Instagram. Yeah, and I, I love talking about this because I can give you guys examples of people from the Legion who have just kept it real and blown up because of it. And one that I always talk about is Jenna Geary. So Jenna Geary started out in the Legion and she is, I believe, the third person that I ever pulled from the Legion up to up to tier three. So she she is an original Legion member. You know, we're going back a couple of years to when we first started. And now she is, this is this is not for the sake of the story, she is the number one top coupon code earner for Black Salamis women. And she's right there in the mix with Guy Cisternino and with Cody Montgomery, two very good IPB pros. So that right there just shows you that you do not have to be a professional to be putting up outstanding numbers. What Jen has always done is put her story out there. This is who I am, this is what I'm doing. I'm a mom, I'm a trainer, I work with other people. Sometimes I have bad days, I'm strong, I'm upset, I'm eating. But she's showing all these different sides of herself and there's so much content going out that people start to be basically on her team. They're like, yeah. I'm on the Jen team, I wanna see what she's got going on. And you know what happens with that, guys? People start watching so closely 
that they start becoming fans. And it's so funny because people are like, oh, I would never think that I would have fans. You know, I don't have a big following, but they're fans of who you are as a person, not what your physique looks like. And I have a a saying, I've been using this for years because I mean it. I don't sponsor bodies, I sponsor people. And so you could have the best body in the world. And I've brought some girls on over the years that were just insanely good looking and had millions of followers and they had so many followers because people were just looking at them because they looked good and you know what they had no engagement and they brought nothing to the brand because they weren't people they were just images now i've brought people to the brand that had a fraction of the followers that they've done but the engagement's been through the roof and people are paying attention to what they're saying because they've put such good stories out and i always i always want to show how far you can come in the Legion by using these examples because we also just put on, a, we're putting on our first ever uh, powerlifting competition. We're super excited about it. And it's for the Blackstone Labs Legion. You've gotta be a Legion member to qualif- to be able to qualify and, and compete. We're gonna give away some cash prizes, but the head judge of this is Quads Like Mom, Sam Rogel, who was the first ever Legion member that I pulled up into Blackstone Labs Tier 3 sponsorship. And she got my attention because she was wearing a Blackstone Labs shirt, squatting heavy in the gym, and I noticed that she was a single mom, and I was like, wow, this is really cool. So she's a single mom. She's out there training hard, trying to be the best that she can be. She wants to go into competitive powerlifting, and now, years later, she's actually one of the best in the world, and she's going to be the head coach of the, of the, or excuse me, the head judge of the whole damn competition. That is somebody that in their head, I'm sure in the beginning, didn't see themselves as a hero, uh, an unlikely hero. And now they're one of the main faces of our brand because they put their whole story out there. So you, you don't get to know who anyone is if they're not telling their story, but you never know who might like you or, or want to be your fan or follow you if you put that story out. 100%. And I mean, you just really have to take a look at your feed, at your posts, and take a look at everything before you post it and, f- and just follow the rules. Is it something entertaining? Am I being my authentic self? Is it informative to people? Like, especially when you're someone who's like kind of in shape or even a professional bodybuilder. Like, you have to look at things. Like, people look up to you and you have like more authority, mm-hmm. more I mean, people trust you more when you talk about fitness. So you have to take a look at it as, what can I do to either motivate people? What can I do to inform them about what I do so I can be better? And you have to take a different approach. Like when you, if, you, if you're not someone who's you know, at all in shape, you have to make a goal to try to get in shape and tell people about the journey because there are gonna be, pe- there are gonna be people on your feed who think the same thing as you and they're gonna look at that and say, wow, I'm really happy that you know, John's doing that. He yeah. looks, he, it's, it's very you know, admirable. And you're going you're gonna to play much more on that empathy in people than you would if you just posted a picture of, like, your progress pics. Like, you're, you, you tell your story, people are going to feel you go in your shoes, and they're going to enjoy watching you. And that's why people love Guy Sustronino. And, you know, as far as IFBB pros go, there are people that are just absolutely amazing. And they just look phenomenal. And I can tell you of that group of guys – a lot of them don't even have sponsorships because they're not putting anything out on social media. And many of them, they have coaches and stuff that reach out to me. And one of the first things they say is, you know, he's not really big on on social media. And then I say, well, then he has no value to me. And they're like, yeah, but he's going to go out and win these shows. And I say, so you're telling me that you want me to give him money just because he looks really, really good and has the potential to go and win these shows. What do I get out of that? And he's like, well, you get to say, like, you know, I sponsored that guy. And I go, so I get to say I paid for this guy to do absolutely nothing uh, other than look good. Now, then you have guys like Guy Sertonino who busted his butt to get to be a pro. And there are many people that think that he looks amazing. But he was somebody that had to work so damn hard, and he's never been afraid to put his story out there. And the people that are really following him and supporting him are not just fans of bodybuilding. They're people that are fans of proving people wrong, proving yourself, you know, overcoming things, overcoming obstacles. The kid's gotten hurt so many damn times. He had COVID last year. He's got all these 
things that he's put out there that people are like, oh man, I can't believe that so happened to that him. Guy, but that it makes them want to follow along closer. And he's never been afraid to put it out. And if you're an influencer, you got to show people like, hey, life's not always beautiful. 100%. You know, there's rough stuff that happens, but I'm going to show you and you can fo- and watch how I'm getting through it. You know, like think about it this way. Like if you watch a movie and everything's good the entire time, it's going to be a shitty movie. That's why people liked Game of Thrones so much because there were so yeah. many crazy things that happened all the time. Like you have to see your posts, everything you put on social media as if you're making a film. Mm-hmm. Look at it and say, am, am I just showing all the good things that happen? People are going to lose interest in that really fast. You know, people don't, um, it's, it sucks, but people don't want to see people being successful most yeah. of the time. Like they, like, especially if you're in better shape than they are, if you're in a better position in life than they are, you have a nicer car than they are. Most of the times, especially when you're, when you're talking to your friends, they don't want to see you. They want to see you doing good, just not better than them. If you're in better shape, like what you should do is always show the bad things because it makes it very hard for people. One, it makes it, makes it so you get better engagement. You look like a real person. Number two, it makes it harder for people to say, oh, he's got it so easy. You know, like, look at everything as a film. How can we make this more interesting? Like, in every film, there is a problem. There is a, um, a str- there's like a struggle. Like, mm-hmm. the first part, everything's going fine. Then you have the problem. Something bad happens. And then you have, like, this climax where the problem reaches its peak, and then there's a resolution. So they bring you through this roller coaster every single time you're in a movie. Think about how you can imp- implement that in your posts. Because... Hollywood's been doing that for years, and it's been working for them. Like, just because it's social media doesn't mean you can implement the same strategies that's used by the film industry to make really, yeah. really enticing stories. Mm-hmm. Like, you should, everybody should look up, like, filmmaking and look up how a story is constructed. It's something that will take you literally 10 minutes, and it's going to improve your ability to tell stories so much. And other than that, look at your favorite influencers. Look at the people that you watch religiously. What are they doing? Are they using the same techniques we're talking about? Or are they using something different? Did they use something that you think is really interesting? Implement it. Like, there's a reason why these people, like the big influencers have 50 million, 100 million, 500 million views. It's because they know how to use the system to get their views, their, their videos out there more. They know how to present themselves. Mm-hmm. They know how their videos work, the algorithms work. But we're not gonna go over algorithms. Mm-hmm. Um, but they know how to work them to make it work for them. And I think that's super important. Like, just think about it. Like, you, you have to look at your Instagram not just as a means to show your grandparents, you know, how things are going in life for you. Or, you know, show your friends how good you're doing in life. Use it to show your life. Like, yeah. it's, your, it's your resume for, like, the digital world. Like, people are, like, when you're, whether you're getting a job, whether you, um, a girl that you um, started talking to just first meets you, where do you think they're going first? Mm-hmm. It's they're looking at you. Like, don't get me wrong. You know, that might be the reason why people always want to show their best self on social media. But then you just feel kind of fake mm-hmm. if you're just showing all the good stuff in your life. You know, so you just got to work on trying to figure out how you want your authentic self to appear. You know, don't get me wrong. There's some things that you're never going to want to put on social media, and that's fine. But figure out the balance that you want to have for your personal brand. You know, um, for example, like these are some of the ideas that I would have for great posts on the Legion. These are Legion specific. I'm going to use Legion for most of the examples because um, I think it's just a great opportunity to go over this. But these apply to everything you do. These are more like examples on like being an influencer and how you how you make like marketing posts for another company. You know, it's not just taking a picture of the of the product in the gym or um, taking a picture of you in the gym with a Blackstone Lab shirt on. You know, it's more than that. You, you have so much more of an opportunity to learn how to sell the product. And one of these ideas is like, on days where I hit, I feel like hitting the snooze button, Dust X really comes in clutch. It might be because I'm a fiend for caffeine, some, but some days Dust X from Blackstone Labs is the only thing that gets me the power I need to get through my morning workout. Or to all the people who follow me who think it's out of reach to be an IFBB pro or even get into shape, all it takes is hard work, dedication, and the right resources. Um, there are meal plans that cost the same as a Big Mac and McDonald's. There are gym memberships that cost less, that cost less than Netflix. There are supplements that are literally free if you don't mind talking about your fitness journey on Instagram. Mm-hmm. Listen, you know, like when you're at a higher level, you need to motivate people. That's, you need to motivate people and inform people about how they can get into the fitness world and 
um, like because they're looking up to you not not just because you have a great physique, but they're they're trying to understand how they can be more like you, and you have to respect that and kind of go along with what they they expect you to be and give them advice. That's your biggest biggest opportunity there. But like when you're talking about like smaller people, you know, people just in there, talk about your workouts, talk about what you did, explain them because the people that you know, never went to the gym a day in their life who's always been interested in getting back in shape, they're looking at you. Like, you have the opportunity to kind of be their excuse to get back into the gym. And you have to see it as you have to add value there. I mean, another thing is like leg day. Leg days have always been one of my weak points and I'm fully committing to building up my legs. I did insert leg workout here. And other than the fact that I feel like I won't be able to walk tomorrow, BCAA resurgence from Blackstone Labs is going to be a godsend tomorrow. You know, just figure out ways where you can tell a story and implement the product. Because when you're just putting up a product, people are going to be like, oh, he's getting paid to do that. Mm -hmm. You know, but if you implement it in your daily posts and everything looks consistent between everything you're doing, it is going to be so much more effective. Like this is what you, when I don't I'm a nerd, so you know I watch Linus Tech Tips, mm -hmm. you know, and this is what he does. He makes videos um, based around products that the people that sponsor him do, you know. And there's a bunch of people. If you look at like, for example, like if. Um, Casey Neistat, this is like old school, like video, video, video um, um, vlogger guy. Yeah, I know he is. You know, like when he was like actually like advertising for a company, he made a video using their products and he made an interesting video using their products to advertise them. He didn't just say, oh, this is sponsored by, you know, whatever company that he was getting sponsored by that day. He didn't just show the product because you don't really convince anybody mm -hmm. by telling them something's great. You have to show them it's great. Yeah. You have to give them the story behind it. Why? You know, and if you kind of explain it in your own words and it, you make it seem more genuine by you actually speaking it, you know, so I, you just have to look at everything you're doing and say, how can I make this better? How can I follow the rules of like, is it interesting? Is it informative? Is it authentic? And use that every day in your social media, whether it's in the feeds or stories or anything, you know, take a look at your schedules. Like, when are you posting? How can you best make, um, make an impact with your posts? You know, post one to three times a day. Um, two is a great, you know, everybody should aim to do two, but one is perfectly fine. You know, start thinking about how you can build your social media platform better for yourself as well as just for the Legion. I mean, even if you're doing it for yourself, it doesn't even have to be for the Legion. Just think about how you're building your personal brand. I mean, because there are so many people like that if they use these tips, they could get so much larger on social Absolutely. media. Absolutely. You know, and you don't know if, unless you try. So yeah. if, if you want to get to to level three, where where the people that you guys look at as your as your big influencers, and you're like, I want to get there with Blackstone Labs, like they have minimum requirements that they must hit. This isn't like, okay, you guys got to do this. Like they have to hit these things no matter what. And the thing is, it's not really that hard. I have people all the time when I sign guys to you know. He was like, what are the requirements? And I told him, and he was like, that's it. And I was like, you'd be very, very surprised how many people can't do this. So for my tier three athletes, they have to do 12 posts a month, right? So if you think about it, you got 30 days in a month. So that's not even half, not, not even half the days in the month. So if you're following uh, Chris's rules and you're doing at least one post a day, that's 30 posts right there. And if you only have to do 12, that's 18 other days where you didn't have to do anything at all. Yep, and mm -hmm. not just that, like if you're in the Legion, mm -hmm. um, it's different if you're a professional athlete and you mm -hmm. have 12 posts, yep. that's different. But show your authentic self. You only have to do five to seven posts a month to be Simple. in your Legion. But you know what? If you see that your posts, um, your, your, um, your engagements are a little bit less with the Legion, and I would expect that to a certain extent, mm -hmm. focus on building out the rest of your profile to be an interesting. Because the more you do that, the more your Legion posts are gonna succeed as well. Like. All, your engagement is based on how many times people skip you when they look through feeds. Yep. And it's based on how many times people look at your video without liking it or commenting on it, engaging with it in some way. The more you put out good content, the more the rest of all of your other content will succeed when you post it. So it's, it's like everything is related. So try to put out the best content you can with everything you do. I mean, 80, if 80% 80 of your content is great, the other 20% is going to be better because it's being seen more and it's being engaged with more, yeah. you're going to develop more of a following. 
And that's super important. I mean, whether it's, you know, fa Facebook, social media in general, like TikTok, you know, that's their, that, that's their trick too. I mean, if you don't have a TikTok, if you're, if you're bigger and working out, you definitely should. It's a great platform for getting, you know, your stories out there. People, you know, spend a lot of time on TikTok mm -hmm. that are, you know, people on TikTok and they have a big fitness community. Yeah. You know, post everything on, on, on Instagram and post it on TikTok, you know. Yeah, we, 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 so our Legion stuff, our main requirements are based around Instagram, but there are absolutely other things that you can do. If you're a YouTuber, for instance, uh, Kenny KO, he barely posts on Instagram, but what we've worked out is a YouTube deal. If you are somebody that is super active on TikTok, reach out to us. There's probably yeah. plenty that we can do. Now, if you're not, if you're new to this, if you're just entry level, then we are starting you with Instagram. Now, yeah. there, are, there are people that do all sorts of great Facebook content. As a company, we do all of this stuff. But just as an individual, it's probably easiest if you wanna get recognized by a company to just start putting this information out on Instagram. 100%. And that's why we wanted to do this podcast for you guys today. Yeah, I mean, if it's viral worthy, TikTok is great because you have more um, visibility to people that aren't following you. They're more public. but. Instagram is still king when it comes to a lot of this stuff. And if you want to get my attention and get posted on the Blackstone page or my personal page, you've got to do something that is eye grabbing. It can't be just reposting something else. It can't be just taking a picture of a product. I can do that myself. You have to really be showing yourself when you do this. Exactly. And you know, and one comment from PJ Braun is worth 10 comments from somebody else. That's how the algorithm works. It's not just how many people, but the quality of the people that are engaging with your posts. And I wanna make sure before this, this ends that we, there's one thing that's very, very important that a lot of people don't do. You can follow all these rules that we put out, right? And you can say, okay, I'm gonna follow these rules. I'm gonna put these things out. I'm gonna tell my, my story. I'm 400 pounds. I'm gonna buy a Trojan horse. And I'm gonna let everybody know, hey, I'm 400 pounds. I bought a Trojan horse. This is day one of my story. Then a week later, I'm gonna say, okay, guys, I cheated on my diet. I didn't lose anything, but I'm still using the, tro the Trojan horse. Then week three is gonna come. I'm gonna say, okay, guys, I did really good this week. And you're, you're putting your story out. Now as the story is going out, okay. So you've got three already. So you're almost done with your posts. But... As you've been telling your story, are people now saying, good job, we're rooting for you, I'm Black and Labs Legion too. And if they are, are you talking back to them? Because if you're not, oh, you're yeah. absolutely failing. And that's one of the things that the big influencers do really well. And I will say, I, I, I hate to blow up spots, so we'll not say any names. Many of them have somebody doing this for them. Uh, because I'll have people all the time say, oh my God, I can't believe it, so-and-so commented back or liked my post. But... They're doing that because it's increasing engagement. their engagement for them also. And you'll notice that. And I'll, I'll give you an example. So Be Real from Cypress Hill, he's got a pretty big following on Instagram. And part of what he does is he every single comment that somebody puts on his page, he puts like a thumbs up with it. He engages back with it. And I've noticed that there's a lot of influencers that do similar things. But if you're not doing that all, you're totally missing out on pulling that engagement in and getting yourself put back up into these other timelines and yeah. stuff like that. That's why that's so important. I try to, and listen guys, there are days when I'm really busy and I just can't do it. But what I try to do is maybe a couple days later, I will take an hour, I'll sit down and I'll go back and I'll look at the comments and I'll write back to the people and let them know like, hey, thank you for the comment or this is funny or this is not funny or maybe somebody said something wise to me and I'm saying something wise back. But I try to make sure I take the time to do that for two reasons. One, I love being in touch with you guys. And two, I know that it's gonna increase my engagement and help my page get more. 100%, and it's not just because of the algorithm that that works very well. It is the algorithm. If you comment back, it the algorithm puts you more, you know, it increases your engagement you know, mm -hmm. score. Um, but also it's the fact that it helps you create a community. It helps you, like, if people know that if they comment, they're gonna get an answer back from you, yeah. it just makes it so much more likely that that person is going to comment again. Like if, you know, you have someone you really look up to or you have someone, one of your friends, and you just never answer them in the comments, it's just going to make it seem like, why, why am I even bothering? Mm -hmm. Like you just have a better community mentality and it increases their engagement on everything you do after that. Especially if it's something like PJ Braun, like they look up to you and you comment back to them. They're going to keep going to your post constantly because they feel like so much better. They like, oh, he answered me back. You know, it's just like 
it gives them that rush of dopamine that pushes people back to. And that's what it's all about. We're doing this because we're trying to help each other. Blackstone Labs is not about pre-workouts and everybody has that stuff. Blackstone Labs is about being the best that you can be. And I wanted the Legion to be a bunch of people that were all trying to be the best they could be in some way. Maybe they wanted to be the best powerlifter, or maybe they just wanted to live longer. But regardless, they wanted to be a better version of, them, of themselves. And the Legion is a community of those people together trying to be their best. So, um, Chris, I think we touched on just about everything. I yeah. want to make sure that people know, though. I'm going to close this out with something very, very important. Chris, he might be the expert that I brought on today, but... He's also a legend at Blackstone Labs. And some of you guys may have heard me say Chris the Intern. And I will always uh, endearingly call him Chris the Intern. But this is a cool story that I think that is important for you guys to know. So back in, I believe, 2018, uh, he was finishing up school. And as part of his degree, he had to intern at a, what was it, just a tech-based company? Um, any company with a marketing department, but yeah, mainly tech-based. Any, any company with a marketing department that was tech-based. And I said to him, I said, well, here's the deal. I am going to uh, let you interview with the head of my um, marketing and tech department, uh, David. He's the vice, vice president of the company. He's very, very hard to impress. And the reason that this is all such a big deal is because I would have people write to me all the time about Facebook, about Instagram. I can increase your revenue. I can do all these things. And I would bring them in to meet David, and he would say, nope, waste of time. No, 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 this guy's a salesman. When I brought Chris in, I said, remember, he's just interning for school. And they spoke for way longer than I thought they were going to. And the interview was done, and they both came out smiling and having a good time. And David said to me, that kid is really, really good. And I said, holy shit. David ever says anything good about anybody. I can't believe it. And I was like, so I brought in somebody good? And he was like, yeah, he can absolutely intern here. Well, during that time here, he actually found out something that was a mistake on Blackstone Labs that actually that period of time, like I said, 2018, we wound up saving 180000 almost $200,000 because of what he fixed on the Blackstone Labs website. So to me, an intern that could come and affect your company like that, that's pretty damn impressive. And I told him when he left, I said, um, I will always uh, respect you and have your back. And I actually, even though he was an intern, he just did it for school. I said, you know, you might not want to tell your professor this, but I'm going to give you a bonus uh, because you freaking did such an awesome job. And we developed a bond. We really did. And I think everybody here liked Chris a lot as well. So now years have gone by and we got into a position where I was like, you know what? I really need some help. Who's the best guy to turn to for help? And I turned to the infamous Chris the intern, but he's doing way bigger things now. I'm just lucky to have you here today. Um, how, how busy are you these days? Well, 55 hours a week. And like, how many companies are you actually helping out? Right now, four or five. But most of my, most of my clients are people that buy me on retainer. Um, so they have particular problems they're looking to solve. I go in as a consultant. I go, I go in as a designer, a developer, and I help them achieve things. You know, like most of them are like on commitments where I'm doing stuff for them every month. Um, so my job is mainly just to improve their business practices and like a general point of view. Like what can we do to help the website? What can we do to help their marketing plan? You know, I do, you know, all sorts of ads as well as website things that could help them kind of grow out. So, I mean... I don't really focus on small, little, like, I, I'm mainly focused on um, helping companies and I'm more involved in those particular mm -hmm. companies than I am, like, volume. Yeah. Because when I was first starting out too, you know, that was the big thing that I always saw all the time was, like, people wanted me for these little projects. And, like, the people that spend the least amount of money on you are the people that always expect the most. Absolutely. Mm -hmm. You know, like... They always think they own you for that, you know, thousand dollars, two thousand dollars, that five hundred dollars, and they're the ones that always become the problem. Well, meanwhile, the people that pay you seven thousand a month are literally your best clients, and they never bother you. Like the people with the most that give you the most money are the least problems, and I never like understood that. Well, I I have learned also that in life, you get what you pay for. 
And yeah. everyone everyone always wants a deal. Everybody always wants a bargain. And you know what? A lot of times you try to get this crazy bargain deal and then you're bummed out afterwards. Because in life, you do get what you pay for. And when you want the best, you pay for the best. And when you want the best supplements, you get Blackstone Labs. And for this situation, I turned to Chris because the lesion means everything to me. And I wanted it to be the best that it could possibly be. And I asked another person who I respect greatly, who's the best person to come in and, and, and fix this program and put it in the right direction? And without hesitation, he said, Chris. And so now we have Christian Duke that's uh, taken over running the Legion, and we're perfecting the whole program. We're actually even developing software specifically for the program. That's what Chris is doing. And I'm going to, of course, be involved as much as I possibly can because I love the Legion. It's so, so important to me. So thank you very much, Chris, for coming on today. And guys, I hope you listen to this and just, if you even take a couple of the things that we said and apply them, not only will you make us happy because you're doing what we want you to do for the legion but uh, you're gonna make friends you're gonna make more relationships happen and you're gonna have a better overall experience on social media and if that's not what you're doing what's the point of doing it for me if i was not trying to either reach out to people touch somebody in some way or make money i wouldn't have social media if you follow these things and you have interesting content and you know how to market yourself, you could be one of the bigger social media influencers. Mm-hmm. I mean, it just comes down to how you market yourself if you have great content. Yep. You know, and that kind of like goes down to everything I've been saying. Like, even if you think about this every day, when you, when you, right when you make a post, make one mantra to yourself. Think about one thing we said today. Write it down, think about one thing, and apply it every day. Like, listen, if you, what you got from this is be entertaining, be informative, and be authentic. Apply that to your post. Then go on to the next thing. You don't have to worry about schedules. You don't have to worry about this, 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 and that. Try to focus on one of those things every day, and it's going to make it much easier for you to get used to doing it and baking it into your instinct. Like, you have to have the marketing instinct because that's going to – don't think about it every time. Try, like, doing it on instinct, and that's when you're going to get better results. That's mm-hmm. when you're going to get better content. When you start baking it into your eye, your head, oh, this is, you have to look at something going on in your everyday life and say, this is going to be great content. And that's what happens with people like Mr. Beast yep. and people, people who make content for a living. They're not going around um, um, on that day saying, oh, I'm going to go to the gym. They're saying, you know what? I'm going to go to the gym and I'm going to do this and I'm going to record it. They're thinking about things constantly about how they can be more effective at their like, communication and their social media. Yeah, don't just say, why not me, or be jealous. Just go out and try it yourself. Exactly. All right, well, that's it. Perfect, perfect information from my very, very good buddy, Chris. And uh, do you want to plug in your social medias or anything like that? I mean, I don't really even use social media that much no, anymore. No, there you go. He just helps I just, <laughs> I just help companies with it. <laughs> well, thank you very much, Chris. But I am at San Giorgio on Instagram if you guys want to check that out. That's him as a person. He's, he's a very interesting man. You scroll through there, you'll find some things that you never would have imagined before. I actually like showing people because they're like, wait a minute. He's a very, very talented guitar player also. Who would have thought? And, and there's a lot on there. If you, if, if, you, if you take a guy like Chris and you try to judge him just by an episode like this, you'd be really shocked at what you can find. But you know what? A lot of people say that about me, and I put it all out there on social media. Yeah. And that was the whole point of this this uh, show today. So, we're here to help. We love you all. Yeah. Peace out, bye. Peace out, bye.